I am so excited to be with you today. I am here in LA and I am finally feeling better. I've had this flu that's kind of come and gone and come and gone and I've been up and down and I'm just so excited. Authenticity Codes starts tonight, which I, it's going to be so incredible. Now that it's the day of, there's just all of these pieces like dropping in and I'm so excited to share it. And I actually want to share one of the pieces of wisdom that's really related to this today. So one of the things that I have been not just seeing, but really, really feeling in people's experience is this thing where we've like, got it, we're so on. And then we have some kind of wobble and we just get so stuck in it. We like compound the wobble. We make something that didn't have to la last so long. We make it take forever, like weeks, 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 sometimes months, sometimes half a year, you know? And what I want to talk to you about and what a big part of the first authenticity code is about is about this distinction between when we're tuning into our old self and our new self. And a really important piece of this is when we tune into that version of ourselves, we tune into all of it. We turn into the emotions, we tune into the thought patterns, the behavioral patterns, and we also tune into who we give our authority to. And so a lot of us, the old self is our very habitual, very conditioned self. It comes from our childhood experiences. It comes from what we learned growing up. It comes from what was projected onto us from society. And a lot of that also comes with this outsourcing of truth. It's I am meant to listen to parents. I'm meant to listen to authority. I'm meant to listen to someone outside myself to understand truth for me. In other words, authority for me. And so one of the things that I really notice is a lot of very brilliant, incredible human beings will come to this place of knowing where they trust their inner guidance, where they're led in a certain direction to a certain, and, and they get this, this, this guidance of this is who I really am. This is who I was supposed to be, but this is who I really am. And they come into a line, we come into alignment with that. And there's this magic, there's this harmony, there's this synchronicity, there's this beautiful window where we've got it. We're like, this is me. This is who I am. I feel it in every day and every moment of every experience. This is who I am. It feels like the best Thing in the world. And then a lot of times what happens is we're, we've are we been talking a lot about tests on this trip. Actually, I've been talking to my friend that's with me and I've had my own tests. There's always tests, right? And so a lot of the times what happens is when the test comes, we tune back into the old self because that's the familiar self. That's what we know. That's the pattern. That's who I've always been. That's the version of me that my mind wants to go to because my mind always wants to navigate my current situation based on the predictable past, which is part of what limits me by giving me only predictable possibilities. So in the tuning into that old self, part of what we tune into is where we found truth, where we gave our authority to. And so this is really tricky because the very thing that brings us into alignment and into coherence with who we truly are is this inner authority. It's this inner guidance. It's this trusting of the I am that I am to lead me where I'm going. And as we tune in, as we so easily do to the old self, when any fear or doubt or lack comes in, we also tune into the version of ourselves that's given away our authority. And what I find happens here a lot is when this little tune out, tune in could have happened, what happens is once we go back into that version of ourselves that's given our authority to others, we start to look to other people to tell us what to do, who to be, all the things. And so this period ends up getting stretched out and stretched out and stretched out. And we let in all this doubt because as we go into this version that goes out of, I know, I am the, I am that I am, and I know we tune into this version of ourselves 
that looks outside of ourselves for answers. And so what happens is we go along and although we were very clear and when we were in this state of harmony, we we're like, I, I know it, I've got it, I feel it, this is who I am. But as we tune into that version of ourselves who looks outside for answers, we get a little bit lost and we start looking. And a lot of the times we don't wanna be wrong the predictable mind loves to be right. And so we tune into this version of ourselves and goes looking for answers. And we go, well, I believe this, but let me also listen to that because I don't want to be wrong. And if I consider both perspectives, and maybe if I let in a little bit of what my parents said, or what my professor said, or what my teacher said, or what my ex-partner said, or what's been mirrored to me my whole life, then I won't be wrong. And I get the safety of being right. But in that safety of being right, I give up that connection to my inner authority, to my knowing of what is going to guide me and take me in the direction that's meant for me. I lose the connection to all of the possibilities and I go into this very logical, limited framework. And what tends to happen here is as we let in more doubt, as we let in more conflicting opinions, we um, we make ourselves even more susceptible to doubt. And so then we just let in all of this stuff. Now we're like compounding the doubt. We're compounding the conflict. Com we're comp I can't talk this morning. I don't know. It was like a le le leftover of being sick. We compound the doubt, we compound the confusion, we compound all of these pieces that have come in and caused this fragmentation. And then it's like the clarity that I once felt is kind of shattered. It's almost like this mirror that's shattered in front of me. And now I need to take all of the pieces and try and put them back together. Now I need to take all of the pieces and try and understand what's what's happened. Why don't I have that clarity? Why don't I have that knowing that I had? Well, it's because we went into this version of ourselves and we outsourced our authority and we started looking to all of these different things outside of ourselves for answers. We left things we let things in that are in contrast to what we believe. We've actually increased something called cognitive overload. And now our unconscious, our nervous system is constantly trying to process and resolve all of these conflicting beliefs. And we're literally losing energy, qu quite literally, is being sapped away as we're trying to resolve all of this conflict in the background. And this is a lot of what brings us to this feeling of wobble, a lot of what brings us to the feeling of lack of clarity. And so the ability to really stay connected to us, our inner authority, our inner knowing, and not tune into this version of ourselves that is used to looking outside of ourselves for answers. And of course, we can always learn from the environment, but I'm talking about like looking for truth, capital T truth outside of ourselves. The better we can get at not tuning into that and really staying connected to who we truly are, the more powerfully and the more effortlessly we're going to be able to navigate our life experience, our situation, because we're not constantly going into doubt. It's it's the external truth seeking is a match for inner doubt. And what of course what we what we emotionally calibrate to we tend to attract. And so as we're in a place of doubt and we're seeking truth, we're we're generally going to find more things that are just going to bring us more and more doubt. So if you are here watching with me live, please let me know in the comments as I am using a different software today and I am not 100% sure if it's working. So I'm hoping that this is going live and I'm getting a million comments right now. So I am just going to check my phone. Okay, I purpose my mastermind. That's all good. And so what I really want to leave you with is this awareness of when you go into looking for answers, when you go into looking for answers, let that be the red flag. Let that be your warning sign to come back home, come back home to here. You have all of the answers you need inside yourself. You have all of the pieces within you. And Really, when we tune into that knowing, that's when we do it. That's when we 
have the thing drop in that makes no sense. That's like, this is the direction that I'm going, or this is the crazy thing. We hear all of these stories about people who have taken these incredible leaps. I know it's been, my life has been like that. When I've taken these incredible leaps, that's when there's been this exponential um, you know, success and just things, things just sort of fall into my experience and happen. But what happens is a lot of us do this and then we forget and we're like, okay, I took the leap and now I need to be safe. And like in, in, in order, and there it's right there, that's the window in order to be safe. Let me tune in to this old version of myself that sees outside authority so that I don't make a mistake so that I'm not wrong. And that is it. That's the window that doubt the dream killer gets in when we go searching outwardly. So we can always we can always be in a state of learning. We can always be in a state of allowing, but it's that it's that outward search. That's the feeling of, I don't have the answers. I need to look outside myself. That is the thing that sabotages us. So can we stay in the knowing, even when it's hard, even when we're presented with conflict, even when we make a mistake, even when the universe brings us the test and our our experience doesn't support that everything's working out, that everything's going great, that, that, you know, it's like you will really be tested. Can you stay in that knowing? This is who I am. This is where I'm going. This is what I believe. I feel truth. I know what's best for me. I trust that inner wisdom and really just not tune into that old outdated version of yourself that looked to parents and authority and the internet and science and religion or whatever it is to tell you what truth is. And as you learn to do this in higher and higher stakes and higher and higher pressure situations, it's just going to be so incredible because you're going to be able to skate through the test of life with ease. And this is one of the things I'm always talking about is so often people will say, oh, but this situation, I'm like, yeah, but it's not about the situation. It's about your ability to stay grounded and connected to who you are and your clarity in the face of contrast that's the whole that's the entire game of life can you stay connected in the face of contrast not can i manifest a perfect life and can everything be easy can i stay connected in the face of contrast that's the thing that creates the life you want and so every time you go through the process that I've described in this video and tune in to the old self who gives up your authority you're making that process you're making that so much more difficult because you're um, you're dissipating your momentum and sometimes even starting to go backwards. And compounding momentum is one of the most powerful things that we can do in life. And so we, one, we don't want to dissipate that. And two, we want to really understand that we can still come, like, let's just use being sick as an obstacle. So for me, being super sick when I'm traveling and I'm trying to do all of these things. It's like I could have dissipated all of my momentum and let it go to zero and then had to start from zero, but I didn't. I kept kept going like mindset-wise, emotionally, energetically, even though it might have not been the rocket ship of forward in the things around me that I want. I'm not letting it go backwards. And so that way it's almost like the pen I don't know how this is like what's coming through. It's almost like the pen is off the page, but then the second it goes back down, it's like, we're going, we're going, we're going because all the fuel is there. All the magic is there. I didn't let in these old thoughts. I didn't let in, you know, somewhere in the back door, there's these thoughts of like, um, you know, every time you try to do something, something bad happens or every time, you know, getting sick is the, is the thing that always throws you off the momentum of life. I did not let that in. It was there somewhere on the fringes. And I said, not today. I am not letting that in. I know, and I trust that everything is working out and that I, I just, I've just, I've got it. I've got it. And staying connected to that as I'm getting better. It's like, yes, let's go. Yes, let's go. And I can feel it. It's like the momentum is still there. It's, it's hard to explain, but I can feel it when it's there and it's, it's available to me. And it's like the second I connect, things start moving, opportunities start coming in, just all, all the things, all the things. There's this flow. When I'm in the river of life, I can feel the flow and I can feel how not, not tuning out of my authentic self has been so powerful and not 
messing up momentum and not messing up kind of what's available to me. So we are going live for Authenticity Codes tonight. Part one starts tonight at 5.30 PST. The replays will be lifetime access, so you don't need to be there live, uh, but it is going to be incredible. It's part one of a three-part series uh, that is all about, part one is really about learning not to tune into the old self. Uh, part two is learning to really refine that, tune, tuning into who you really are. And uh, part three is just all about taking it to the moon. So I'm so excited for this series. It's going to be like nothing I've ever done before. And each one comes with the uh, like transmission, the code, and then also um, a hot seat Q&A. Uh, session as well. So I am so freaking excited. We've got some amazing people joining tonight, and I know there's going to be some more jumping in. So if you are interested, I think you can just scan the QR code on the screen. I think it's like right here, and it is also in all of my bios. So I am sending you so much love. Thank you for joining me today. Again, if you were here, let me know. Let me know what your takeaway from this was. Let me know if you have any questions. I'd love to answer it in a future live stream. And I just want to leave you with just really tuning into that difference and being really honest with yourself. Am I in that trust? Am I in that knowing? Am I in that sense of clarity? Am I in that portal of connection to who I am? Or am I outsourcing? Am I letting myself be a past version of myself where, you know, the predictable past becomes my map to the future, where I'm letting in other people's other people's opinions and being overly swayed. I'm letting other people's truth override my own personal truth. Where are you? What's your journey with that? Because a lot of us, especially when we're in the space of trying to figure things out, we go into this energy of trying to figure it out. We go into this energy of like doing to create change instead of coming home. And coming home is always the most powerful thing to do because once you're there once you're in it it's like this pillar in the center of your field where you're so connected so grounded so tapped in tuned in turned on you know what to do you just know what to do and i have experienced this again and again and again and i see this with my clients all the time and this is the space that we create magic and miracles from and it is available to you you are no different it's just a journey to get there but it is an incredible journey that's worth going on so thank you so much for joining me today i am michael edwards if this is your first catch time catching me live let me know i am sending you so much love and bye for now